Um, in this video, I, I want to get into if the C200 is still worth it um, for you know wedding videographers and if you do some commercial work. Um, is it still worth it and kind of why I chose it in my shooting style? So first, let me kind of start with my shooting style and how, how it's kind of evolved. Um, so at the beginning of the year, as I go into the new year, I want to improve. I want to do different things better. I want to be better. I want to make, make more money, all that good stuff. So I did the Philip White training and um, a couple of things I took away is I love kind of his style in, that, in, in the way that it kind of matches mine um, from the standpoint of just blending in and you know capturing things naturally um, but the biggest takeaways that I kind of took from it was I wanted to do more handheld work just more natural movement um, I wanted to blend in even more um, kind of introverted personality so um, when I'm shooting I really don't say a lot and I try not to direct um, I just want to capture things naturally I'm gonna capture those moments and I don't want to miss any like special moments you know, when the dad might come in or another family member might come in and see the bride. Um, so that led me to um, wanting to get back to the to a real kind of camera as opposed to a, you know, DSLR type. Um, I came from, you know, Canon 70D and then I went to um, A7S and then I got a Sony FS5 and then Fuji X-T3. And now I'm back here full kind of circle with um, a larger, I guess, camcorder or kind of a camera. So uh, the, the main reason why is I like the ergonomics. For me, I decided I shoot a lot of handheld. All my B-roll is pretty much gonna be handheld. Um, I don't use the gimbal a lot um, anymore. So how I'm shooting things is I, I have it here. I right in the eye cup and I'm able to get extremely stable footage. Um, I only shoot with IS lenses. So right now I'm shooting with the 85 f 1.4 with is the 100 macro with is and then 17 to 55. so i just got the 85 and that's what i'm going to stay on for the remainder of the day and that's one thing i took away from the philip white is he kind of simplified it he shoots with one lens and obviously this is a crop sensor so it's actually pretty tight but that kind of challenges me to piece together a shot rather than to shoot like a photographer with everything in frame um, and everything like that. So I'm gonna to piece together a close-up of the, of the cake, of the face, or a, a close-up of a part of the you know bride or part of the groom and then move the camera up or piece shots together. So it's a little bit more challenging in that, but I like the, the aesthetics of it. Um, right now, you know, gimbals being so popular, when I watch a lot of other filmmakers, and there's nothing wrong with this, but it's just not my style, all I see is wide shot after wide shot, parallax wide, wide, wide parallax wide 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 over and over again you know when i'm watching you know classic films or you know even blockbuster films you're going to get a, a different array, array of shots you're going to get close-ups you're going to get medium shots you're going to get wide shots um with this i like to be able to mix it up and now i do you still use the gimbal but, um, but generally i'm kind of piecing together more intimate shots I feel like when you shoot tighter, it's a little bit more int intimate. Whereas when you're super wide, it's, it's, it's not as impactful. Um, I feel like I can show the emotion better with a, a tighter lens. And then I get the natural kind of flowy movement um, with this, um, with the 85. And I also picked up this Peak camera design strap. Um, I actually haven't used this on a wedding yet, but my plan behind it is to be able to bring it here and still put tension on it here. So I'm able to get two different types of shots. And then if I'm doing something else, I can actually let it sit down. And the other great thing is when I'm shooting handheld is I can change elevation very quickly. So if I'm here and I can get on a knee and get a low shot, I can just move quicker. The monopod slows me down. And the whole goal going into this year was to just get more shots, get better shots, get, get catch more moments. That's all I care about at the end of the day. That's that's what the brides and the couples are looking for is those moments is what you wanna capture, not a super cool shot or something I think is really, you know, cool. I'd rather just capture moments. So that's the outlook on that. Um, so, I mean, is the C200 a good choice for you? I mean, I don't know. If you're okay with carrying something that may be heavier, um, it's gonna be heavier, um, but also it's gonna make your, your camera um, 
your movement and everything else a lot more stable. Um, are you gonna wanna deal with the, the larger files? So it's 8-bit, okay? But I shoot all my B-roll or most of it in RAW um, because right now memory isn't super expensive to where I'm really worried about uh, you know running out of memory or running out of space on my hard drive. So it has a 256 CF, CF card 2.0 and I get about 30 minutes, which is plenty for the amount of B-roll that I need. Um, my main thing is I like to use it with the couples, uh, especially at sunset and other times too. The main thing is I wanna use um, the camera for my B-roll and 30 minutes of footage of you know capability is enough for me um, to get the B-roll I want, especially with the couple um, B-roll and first looks. I'll, I'll shoot the first look in RAW. Um, the depth is just amazing. It looks more cinematic, right? Um, but generally, that's what I'm shooting with, and I'm matching these with two Fuji X-T3s, and they match pretty well. Um, so it, that's, that's a choice for you. I mean, if you have two types of cameras, and this is a totally different one, then you're gonna have to match three different brands. So they may not be a good, and it may not be worth it, because it's gonna take you a lot more time. So that might be something to consider if you're thinking about it. Um, at the price point of $54.99, it's a, I mean, you're shooting 4K raw. I mean, Canon color science, it looks great. Like um, the internal ND, uh, I mean, the XLR inputs, all that great stuff. Um, I mean, you can't go wrong there. Um, so, I mean, you'd have to figure out whether it's a good choice for you. Um, but at the price point and getting raw, I mean, you can't go wrong. The 8-bit Kodak is still very strong. Uh, I don't see a big drop off between that and the 10-bit Fuji X-T3 format. So, I mean, I feel like it's a win-win. And as for my shooting style, it works. Um, and just the ergonomics of it is great. So if you have any questions, leave them in the comments. I think it's definitely still worth it. Uh, so go get one if you want. Thanks.